Well, look who's here. It's Aki Anastasiu. This is great. Aki, how are you? <laughs> Hi, Ax. Now we can't hear you. Is, mute. What, what is it? Mute, unmute your, your Google Hangout thing there. All together now. Unmute so, yourself. Uh, yes. Aki, <laughs> you're the. Can you all say you're... hello all together? I refuse to unmute this unless you all say hello all together. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, good morning. How are you guys doing? I hope you can hear me okay. Yay. Are you, Ax? Yes, I'm very well, Gareth. Hey, team, how's everybody this morning? You know, you look I'm... very. You're silver haired. You look quite distinguished. And Pumi's got a little bit of gray showing through this morning. I feel like I'm. Yeah, I'm among... I see that. Uh... I'm among all that tresemme in your hair, Gareth. Uh, the most, wow, most illustrious, wow. illustrious people in the country. Look at this. I'm the silver fox, guys. The silver <laughs> fox is here. That's a nice it's little setup that you've got going on there, Axe. You've got uh, very professional equipment all around you. I see a podcast mic in the in the background there. It's all very organized. Hey. I've got that. Um, I've got a little setup over here where I've got a little uh, desk as well, which is. Uh, used for podcasting, and then I've got this um, this amazing little gadget. Let me show you. No, Ooh, show me. Show I, love how. I love it, because Aki gets all no. these cool things. No, this thing is called an Atom Mini Pro, okay? And what this does is you, you plug in at the back, you plug in all sorts of HDMI inputs, and you can do live video conferencing and virtual conferencing. So Ooh. I think that the, the world has changed, and, and I've just been doing so much of that stuff over the last few weeks. Um, so it's been quite quite great, but good to be with you guys. So you, I hope right. you're all well. Let me give you a professional introduction, because, I, I mean, otherwise people are going to say, hey, you just bring Aki on like he's just part of the furniture. All right, so here it is. We are, are really celebrating because... Aki got people through traffic and he made them laugh for 30 years on 702. It's a hell of a wow. time. You, you were basically there straight out of school, right? Yeah, well, actually, I was uh, going there when I was at school, actually. Um, you know, my dad, my dad had a little business that was um, like around the corner. You know where Nelson, where, where Gandhi Square is at the moment? Yes. The studios used to be in downtown Johannesburg, and uh -huh. my dad had one of these uh, food businesses, like a little takeaway place, and I used to work there, as all Greek kids would do on the weekend, um, for a few chappies and some chocolate and a bit of pocket money, and um, right. the DJs over the weekend used to order food, and then we would deliver, so I would walk a few blocks, take them into the building and deliver, and... I just fell in love with radio then, and 702, which was um, in downtown Johannesburg at the time, used to be a music station, and I used mm. to sit in the studio with the DJs on the weekends, and I used to get mesmerized by radio, and I used to spend a lot more time than I should have there, because I would arrive back at my dad's shop about two hours later, and they go, hey, where are you? I sent down the road to deliver the ships, you come after two hours. <laughs> <laughs> by my father. And anyway, so that's that's how I met the guys. And then I bumped, I met Stan Katz and I met John Burks in those days. Yeah. Um, and I used to um call in to Stan Katz in the afternoon. I remember I used to be at school still, and I would call into the Stan Katz show, and we every year was the, the July handicap, the Rothmans July, it was known in the day. Uh, the big horse race yeah. that happens in Durban every year. And I used to do a, a horse race impersonation and trying to get the winner. And I used to do this on Stan's show. So as they come down with 400 meters left to go, Gareth Cliff's on the outside, Pumi coming in on the inside. Here comes the final three. And Gareth Cliff has won by length. The Rothmans line, the winner, a length of a Pumi. See you in third place. So, <laughs> yeah. I, I used to do those impersonations and and then I used to do, I mean, Ronald Reagan was around at the time oh, man. Uh, as the president of the United States. And I kind of got that Ronald Reagan impersonation. So we used to do these skits. And and uh, what would happen is in the afternoon, we'd practice it with Stan Katz on the afternoon drive. And then I'd, then I'd call in as a caller and he'd say, this is the president of the United States. So do you remember when Chernobyl happened? Yeah, yeah. of 
1982, 83, right? Yeah. I mean, I was so, a kid. We don't yeah. remember it. We saw it on the on the HBO series, but okay. Yeah. yeah right. Well, yes. <laughs> one of the skits. One of the skits that I did with Stan at the time was when it happened. He used to take calls from me on a regular basis. So we used to have these one liners, and and this one in particular was. Um, he used to go, good afternoon. I see we've got the Mr. President. Is that you? I said, good afternoon, Mr. Katz. <laughs> this, is, this is the President of the United States of America, Ronald Reagan. And and he go, oh, Mr. President, it's good to see you, Mr. President. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Katz. <laughs> what are you calling us in for, Mr. Mr. President? Well, Mr. Katz, I have a message for the Russian people. When you got to glow, you got to glow. <laughs> so let me let me let me ask you something because you, yeah. you spent thirty years in a place. I mean, you've been doing a whole lot of other things, and and you will talk yeah. about your other businesses and all that stuff in a second. But it becomes a part of your life, and you were waking up every morning, and you were part of the morning show for almost all of that time, or well, certainly for a long part of that time. Um, well, you you get Aki into the, routine. the original eye in the sky. That's Aki right. Was... <laughs> yeah. You used to go up in the helicopter. That was I what mean... you did. Before there was a rub breezy on five yeah. FM, y'all. <laughs> yeah. well, so, you you woke up and you would go and do this show. It's a part of your life. I know because, yeah. um, you know, I, I've just carried on doing this this show of mine at this time. But if if I'd suddenly stopped doing morning radio, it would have felt very weird to me. How how do you feel a week or two, maybe three weeks after you finished? So. I mean, I I was getting up at 4.30 a.m. every morning, and I'm still getting up at 4.30 a.m. I guess it's in my DNA after all these years. Uh, I used to get up a little bit also, earlier. You are, you are very old, and old people tend to wake up early. Oh, they wow. Do, they do. And, you know, you got to get your slippers and all that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah eat your porridge. <laughs> Listen, I just had some porridge now. I had some maltabella. But oh, for no, me... No. Uh, and Sia, he will get there one day. Just remember this moment. Keep this in an archive. Oh, yes. <laughs> right, so you're, waking, you're still waking up early. I'm still waking up early, and um, I'm just kind of doing my thing every day. Um, and I like getting up early, actually. It's nice to get up early. Your day starts off. You plan your day. Um, I, I must be honest. I'm kind of slipping into getting up a little half an hour later, etc. cetera. But um, – you know, it's 30 years, and I guess it's in your DNA, and you know this for yourself. Do you yourself, have a Karen. mid-afternoon nap? Do you, do you then have a mid-afternoon nap after old getting up so early? Do that. Old people always do that for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, actually, um, actually, I, I, I don't have an afternoon nap, um, but when I do need one, I can have one, and I think an afternoon and naps are so underrated. I'm able to actually program my body. I can literally lie down when I need to nap for 15 minutes and I'm lights out back up in 15 minutes, especially That's if amazing. I have an event a, in, in the evening, you know, so I can sleep standing up. That's a skill. Um, those, power naps, <laughs> those power naps are really something that very few people get absolutely right, but you've got to be disciplined. Yeah, like if you say I'm going to have a 20 minute power nap, you actually got to force yourself to wake up after after 20 minutes. Otherwise, you screwed it up completely. No, completely, <laughs> completely. But, but you know, guys, you know, I have a confession. I have a confession to make. Yes. I failed matric because of radio. <laughs> well, my, my dad, my dad failed one year at school because he was playing too much sport. Well, well, I was going to ask you that because speaking of discipline, it, it takes a lot of discipline to be so committed to a thing for over 30 years, the way that you have. Do you think that there's something extraordinary about the way that you've disciplined yourself over the years? Well, I think, I think you need to stay focused on what you want to do and what you want out of what you want to do. Um, but but I also think at the same time, whatever you're doing in life, you always got to reinvent yourself. You've got to think of what's next. You've got to be thinking of how you're going to make yourself, um, you know, open to learning new things and bringing in new knowledge. Um, and yes, you know, when I started off at at, at Prime Media, well, at seven or two at the time, um, you know, I, I had failed matric. They phoned my parents and they said, listen, you're not welcome back until you pass matric. So I went back and I, and I passed matric, um, joined the station. And, you know, I learned everything that I learned from the best in the business, 
whether it was in my marketing tenure as marketing and promotions manager at 702, which I held it for, for a period of time, to doing the traffic, to doing the technology, it's, I believe as human beings, we all have the ability to learn any new skills as long as we apply ourselves to it. And to your question, Pumi, it takes a lot of focus. It takes a lot of reading. It takes a lot of dedication. So you've got to be focused on doing those kind of things and open to doing it as well. Um, Ux, you, you mentioned all these things that you have to do to keep on reinventing yourself and moving forward. Um, and yeah. you certainly, you, you didn't shy away from that stuff. I mean, you, you, hum, you've got a sorbet, two sorbets, isn't it? I mean, you've got two sorbet mans. Well, no, I, well, I had a sorbet salon for ladies and I had a sorbet man, which I, I sold and I've got another sorbet salon. So I've got two sorbet salons for ladies. So when I'm not on radio or talking technology, I'm discussing women's nails and what ah, kind of jelly is. It's called on. balance. Very important. That, no, it's very important. And it's, uh, it's like, isn't it's it true that you, 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 sold the, you sold the sorbet man because they, you couldn't afford to trim your own nasal hairs as often as you were going? <laughs> That's what no, you man. You started putting the business in jeopardy. Isn't that true? <laughs> That's not true at all. That's not true at all. Look at my nasal hairs. I don't know if you can see that. Listen, I, 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 I've always been a bit of a metrosexual and wax my ears and wax my nose. And you know, you. It, it's important. It's important to look good in the world that we're living in. But yes, um, I, I, I didn't sell it for those reasons, Gareth. It's, it's, um, I heard it was too expensive. <laughs> you were going through so many blades that they eventually <laughs> you. You yeah. have to sell the business or we're going to go bankrupt. I'm I a very good cheap guy, you know. Diverse, diversification, right? Yes. So yeah. we, we, we see a lot of that in South Africa on the media and especially with our artists mm. of various kinds is they do spend all of their lives in, in that medium. But it yes. doesn't, it's unlike in America where there's a huge audience and you can become immensely wealthy simply from doing that one thing. You also diversified your time. You know, many years ago, I, I'm i trying to remember the name of the colleague. They said that you're not, show business is not going to be, you're not going to be on show business for your entire life. Um, and that's the reason you need to diversify. And um, I, 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 I had a great passion for technology, which is one of my other passions in life. And I've really done, uh, you know, great stuff there. And, and, and then I invested in these business, in this business and, you know, I just saw I just saw a gap in the market a few years ago, and I thought, well, this is an interesting business. People will always need beauty in their lives, and yeah, you know, this has been a very challenging time as well because, as you know, with the lockdown and with COVID nineteen, um, you know, it's impacted all sorts of businesses and and the health business, the health and beauty business more so because you know it's such close proximity. But I mean, Sia, you haven't been impacted at all. I mean, you're still looking fantastic. Out of the three of you, you look the best. I've got to say. Firstly, compliments in the morning are my best. And then no, secondly, I was actually talking about it earlier on the yesterday on the show that I went yeah. back to get my treatments done for the first time this weekend. Oh, my the first time in six months. That's poor salon. They, they, were busy yeah, I know. From, they were busy from nine to five. I mean, they pulled out the most expensive equipment that they haven't used, fired it up with uh, diesel power and they basically no, started, no, no. started I was to work I was yeah. prodded, I was sucked, wrong, I was rocked, I was wrong, flipped. And... Well, the, <laughs> salons, salons aren't allowed to give Botox, so see how it's It's called a midday treat. Okay. <laughs> yeah. An extended yeah. lunch. See, <laughs> he's feeling uh, himself again. But no, Max, he looks good. Yes. I want to get back to radio for a second because you did yeah. develop this sideline tech reputation which is now uh, i mean really you're up there in, in the uh, top two or three people that anybody thinks about when they think about technology and innovation and you've been to conferences all over the world i mean you yeah. really are knee deep in this stuff and and people come to you to ask you about every element of, of of technological development and where exactly things are going so you're a bit of a futurist as well i mean that's also exciting because you said just a minute ago, you can't just do show business. But when yes. you were in show business, um, you you worked with some of the best people. And what are the things that you you really felt were the best lessons, not for radio, but for life, from some of the people that you got to meet? 
No, absolutely. And um, you, you meet so many interesting people along the way. I mean, um, I've worked with you. Um, I've learned so much from you. I've learned so much from the likes of, you know, the John Burks's of the world, the Stan Katz's. Um, um, I, I worked with a very interesting guy when I was at 702. In the, in, when I first started off at 702, I was a sound engineer. And mm -hmm. I used to record a show with uh, Cocky Tubal. I don't know if you no, guys, oh, I don't yeah, you guys sure. will ever remember right. Cocky Tubal. Um, so every he's Friday morning, he no, he's a complete legend. Every Friday morning for five years of my life, I used to sit in the studio with Cocky Tubal. We used to record a show that used to then get broadcast on a Saturday evening. The man taught me about soul music. He taught me about R&B. He taught me about so many lessons about life and how to be humble in life. And that's the most important lesson I've learned from these people is no matter who you are and what you are and wherever you find yourself in the world, you stay humble and stay true to yourself. Because the moment you, the moment you get over uh, ahead of yourself, that's when life takes you down. Uh, so humble is the most important lesson that I've learned in my life from somebody like Cocky, from just people who haven't changed. I mean, I've known you for almost two decades, Gareth, and you're the same guy that I met 20 years ago. You haven't changed one bit 20 odd years ago. Maybe that's, a hell, a, say, that's a hell of a way to say that I haven't improved at all. I've stayed exactly the same. I've gone backwards, maybe. <laughs> the irony, though, the irony of learning humility from a man named Cocky. Cocky. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wow. But I mean, we used to sit in the studio and he's got the oos caboose pataka two bull shuffle. And man, that guy was just such a legend, legend and, and 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 so loved, you know, um, just an incredible, incredible human being. But I guess in life, to your question, Gareth, we all meet different people in life. And people meet you meet uh, maybe not in your personal career, you meet them for different reasons, they teach you different lessons whether it be your children, whether it be, um, you know, friends that you come across. I mean, you know, I'll give an example. Um, you talk about how life short is. I mean, just, I woke how up yesterday. Short, how, how short life how is. How short life is, yeah. I mean, I woke how up life is. You're speaking like Yoda. No. You're so wise. Yeah. Like, you're yeah. so like, mm, why does you are mix up your words in sentences you do? But I don't want to get too too morose and depressive this morning. Yeah. But I mean, I woke up yesterday morning. I heard and that's why they got rid of you at seven o two. You became very morose and depressed. <laughs> but I woke up yesterday morning, and there was, I, heard, I heard about a friend of mine who who passed away, like my age, and it, you know he went into hospital. He wasn't feeling too well, and all of a sudden, blood clot, boom, and you're gone, just like that. That's life, you know. So, and 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 the whole thing about life is it's not the destination it's the journey so enjoy the journey yeah and also you know it's it's sometimes a good thing when your 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 usual patterns are disrupted a little bit it gives you some space and time to reconsider and to find new <sighs> things to do and you fall in love with new stuff right completely gareth you know people say to me that oh you know you've been retrenched you're not a prime media anymore um you know it must be a big change and i say yes it's a massive change but you know for me change is such a positive motion you know you think about change change is active well, i mean look, let's, let's also be fair you decided not to fight with them but you 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 probably could have if you wanted to you could have had a big fight with them and it would have got ugly and you just decided no this is not worth my time i'm walking away no, well, I've never been the one to be involved in any kind of conflict. I hate conflict. Mm. Um, and then you get to a point in your life, and and I think that it happens with personal relationships, happens in works relationships, when your values don't resonate with the people that you're with, it's well, time to move I'll, on. I'll say this. You, you don't have to nod or agree or disagree, but I know that there are a lot of complete twats in radio management, some of the most useless people I've ever met some really backward, unintelligent, untalented, boring, dreary. Jeez, dreary. don't hold back. Wow. No, and, and and I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not saying this on Aki's behalf. I'm saying this because I've dealt with some of them. I, I, I know <laughs> one really good person in radio management who I continue to work with. That's mm -hmm. Rena. And other yeah. than her, there's not a single one of them that I've ever respected. Not one. You have a yeah, look, in the I, book. <laughs> yeah, look, at the end of the day, in any business, when when you have the wrong kind of leadership, it can determine 
the the growth and the failure of the business. And um, and I think that in today's times and the way radio is evolving, the way entertainment, I mean, look at you guys. Um, you're doing this. This is online. This is where the future is. It's all about podcasting. Um, and this is well, this on is that note. I mean, isn't it interesting to see? Just yesterday, I was I was watching this flurry of social media activity around Joe Rogan's yeah. show. Now you know Joe Rogan obviously has a very successful podcast in the U.S. He started it eleven years ago. It's just been bought up by Spotify. And yesterday, someone posed the the idea of Joe Rogan hosting a presidential debate between Joe Biden and um, and Donald Trump. And, and someone put this out on the internet. Joe Rogan retweeted it and said, sure, I'll do it. We'll do a four-hour conversation, no interruptions. And Donald Trump replied immediately and said, I'm in. Now, wow, the really? The president of the United States, not just saying, yeah, sure, I'll do your show if you invite me, but saying I'm in for something completely revolutionary where we do a presidential debate in, a, in an, an entirely different format. This shows mm. you how podcasting has become so much more credible than so many of the traditional mediums. That's extraordinary. Uh, that is yeah. extraordinary. Uh, really now, is just need to wait. now they just need to wait for Sleepy Joe, right? <laughs> well, mm. wake him up next year and the, 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 the election's <laughs> over. Oh, I'd, I'd love to be part of that. That sounds good. <laughs> We're Imagine. talking about the U.S. elections. I know you got you love elections in particular. I think this election is going to be so interesting. I, I'm really oh. looking forward. To, I love I love U.S. politics. Yeah, part of me is really interested in it, but part of me just wishes it was over already, so that we could all stop being hyped up and made to feel good or bad or ugly the whole time. You know, there's mm. so much about this election that for for most people in America is it's the election of their lifetimes, like everyone is. Um, and the stakes are so high, but I'm kind of, I, I know that I'm going to be over it within days before it's even over. I, I might already be over it because it's, it's just so polarizing. And when America catches a cold, we all sneeze. Or when America yeah. sneezes, we all catch a cold, as, as the, the saying goes. Mm -hmm. So tell me about your plans going forward and what you've got in, in the pipeline and where you're going to be and, and what we can look forward to. Because I know you're not going to shut up and stop doing broadcasting. You know what? I love radio, and I don't think that um, I'm out of radio just yet. I've still got quite a bit to offer. Um, I'm exploring a few options on the technology side with um, with some television, with some with with some with a YouTube channel. Um, I'm also exploring, um, you know, different stuff with regards to the traffic information. You know, I've been doing it for a long time. I know how it works. Um, you know, people resonate. They respect my opinion. They 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 respect the fact that my information is good. So I'm looking at a few options with regards to traffic, and I think traffic is still a very important part of people's daily commute. Um, you know, I've got my my businesses, and and also very involved in the tech space with many of these virtual conferences. You know, I facilitate a lot of conferences. I provide thought leadership and 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 uh, you know consult to various companies on their digital strategy going forward. So there's so many things that are kind of boiling on the pot, but those are the kinds of things that I'm focusing at at the moment, Gareth. But certainly with radio, it's it's in my blood, so I'm not going anywhere. Did you hear from anybody when um, you you announced that you were leaving 702 after all those years? Is there anybody who called you that you thought, oh my god, I, I didn't expect to hear from that person? Well, I, I I was actually flabbergasted <laughs> by the kinds of people that got hold of me. I mean, I had a I had a couple of politicians call me. I had um, you know a couple of business <laughs> leaders call me for sure. Um, and I had many former colleagues call me. Um, I had John Burks calling me. I had John Robbie calling me. I had Stan Katz oh. calling me. You know. <laughs> Hi. Uh, <laughs> uh, Hello. Hi, Aki, are you there? Uh, 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 John, Aki. good morning. Good morning, John. Hi, uh, Aki, uh, uh, are you leaving 702? I have left 702 already, John, in case you haven't heard. <laughs> I, I only oh. heard now. I, I heard this morning. Uh, uh, Stan told me. I, I, I didn't even know Stan was still alive. I'll see you later. It's exactly how he sounds. And, and you know, over the years, he's got yeah. in touch with me. 
I'll, I'll tell you a situation that happened a few years ago. He was, he would phone me up the one day and he goes, Oh, Aki, I, I got your number from Rena Broomberg. Do you remember Rena Broomberg? I said, Of course I remember <laughs> Rena. Rena fired me on several occasions at Stan's because I mean, you know, Stan used to lose it with me and he used to fire me like every third day. Anyway, he phoned me up and he says, I, I think that somebody has hacked into my account. I can't get in. I'm worried because I've got all these personal things. And he was using one of these Yahoo accounts, you know. Oh, and, and I said to him, okay, John, you know, let me try and help you. I said, what's your password? And he spelled his password out. I tested it on another computer, and it's working. I said, will you try on yours? And, and he tried again. Oh, no. I, I, I don't know what is wrong with this. Okay. I, oh, you know, the machine is switching off. Had, he had the caps lock button on. <laughs> Oh, 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 armor. <laughs> True story. This way, password didn't work. Yeah, the caps lock on. Yeah. That's precious. Uh, yeah. okay. All right. So, what's happening uh, with romance, Aki? I mean, everybody wants to know. You know, you're a very eligible man, and you've done so well, and you've got such an interesting life uh, going on. Is there is there a special one? What with that silver with that uh, yeah. silver yeah. fox yeah. vibe? You look, you, like, right uh, you look like you look like what was the guy who uh, who married uh, yeah. Onassis Aristotle Onassis Aristotle no man you should have said no George Clooney not Aristotle Onassis no, oh. no you, you look like Aristotle Onassis yeah and with all your business interests and everything you are just like Aristotle <laughs> yeah except except I have like not point not 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 one percent of the fortune he amassed uh, <laughs> uh, but um. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I, you know, I, I've, um, I, my business partner and I have been uh, together for for a while, and we um, we work together. So, as you know, my daughter is twenty five. She's married, and um, wow, she's, your daughter twenty five. Sure. Yeah, can you believe it? Yeah, she's she's a speech therapist, um, and you know they got married quite young. She learned, she, she learned to be a speech therapist by just communicating with you. She realized she was good at that, and then she. She's turned it into a business. What an incredible! <laughs> she, she used me as a case study. She used me to train and do that sort of thing. But I mean, they got married. I'm not one to, uh, you know, when people get married. I mean, she got married. She was 22, I think. She was very young when she got married. But when the guy came to me and asked me, um, and his name is Jared, and I said, "What do you do?" He says, uh, "I'm a, I'm an actuary." So I said, "Okay, you can, you can get married." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he needs lovely. that kind of excitement in his life. Well, congrats, man. I mean, I I didn't know that your daughter was already 25 and married. I mean, there's a lot going on. That's that's very exciting. No, it is, you know, and, and Gareth, life is exciting. I, I just I love life. I love the opportunities that life brings. Um, I love this country passionately, and I really believe that we've got an incredible amount of work to do, but I think that um, I really believe that uh, South Africa is still the greatest country in the world, and we, we when when we get our when we get our shit right, I think that nobody is going to be able to touch us. And um, we do have a lot of work to do, but I do believe that we are living in an incredible company that a country that is diverse, that has yeah. incredible opportunities, and and I think that we I think there are great things coming for South Africa. One last thing. What about social media? You're one of the first people on Twitter when it started in in the world and yeah. then in South Africa. Uh, you know, I, I've I've got a very mixed view about what's going on in social media at the moment. I think a lot of it has become very poisonous and not particularly yes. helpful. But there's always going to be a huge amount of of really interesting, connected, uh, useful, positive thoughtful stuff going on there. So it's hard to figure out whether it's overwhelmingly good or overwhelmingly bad. We can't turn the clock back. So there's no way we'd be able to imagine a world where we didn't have social media. But what are your feelings on it? Well, I think that you're quite right, Gareth. I think social media has become a very toxic place in many regards. I think people hide behind anonymity and people hide behind, um, you know, th they hide behind this, this persona. And, you know, they, they, they say the nastiest things and the most hurtful things. And I think that social media has got out of hand. And I think that we need to start regulating this in a, in a more responsible way. 
And I think that we need to cast the light on the anonymity. And I think that places like Twitter, for example, if you want to have an opinion on Twitter and you want to say something, you've got to be properly registered. Your, your, your national identity document has got to be used to verify who you are. Um, and and this will end all that toxicity and all those people who hide behind, um, you know, these 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 anonymous accounts and say the most vile things and hurtful things and destructive things um, on, on 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 social media. But then there are these lights, and and I don't know if you guys know this this young lady called Nandi Bushel. Nandi Bushel. Have you heard of the name Nandi Bushel? No. Please do yourselves a favor and go and look at Nandi Bushel. She is this young, young girl who I think must be about eight or nine years old. And she has got this neck and this, she's got an incredible talent to play the drums, play the electric guitar. And she does this mm. stuff on social media. And she is amazing. You go and watch her. It's going to inspire you today. It's going to make you feel good today. And I'm pretty sure that she she's based somewhere in Ipswich in the UK, but I think that she's got South African roots. But she is so good at drumming that she's now being noticed by a lot of people. So if you if you go um, to her to her website, I mean she's been on on Ellen DeGeneres recently. Um, even the Foo Fighters um, did something together with her. Um, uh, Dave Grohl Dave Grohl did something with 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 her recently, and he he actually wrote a song for her, and she jammed with wow. him. She's jammed oh with the guy. God. That's she's phenomenal. Good. She's jammed with Lenny Kravitz. It's the best thing on the internet right now. So take away the negativity and the, the, the toxicity of it all. Go and look at this Nandy Bushel and it'll make your day, Gareth. You see, that makes it all worthwhile. When you find someone like that, you can follow someone who's really interesting or really talented. It just makes it all seem like, you know, being on social media is not all bad. Yeah, yeah, but you know, there are days where I kind of switch off and I say to myself, I'm not going to go there, especially when there's politics involved and, yeah. uh, and people people have their own agendas in the country and it's just so counterproductive, isn't it, sometimes? But, yeah, right. but at the same time, there are things that need to be said, important things that need to be said so that we can move forward as a country, but... Ah, fuck that. Uh, enough of these important things need to be said. <laughs> So, Ax, um, <clears throat> all right, so tell me what the daily routine is now that you don't have to be up and do the traffic. And, and also, just explain quickly to people who weren't there. Pumi mentioned this at the start of the, right. the conversation. I'm so glad because Pumi was actually the one who said, you've got to get Aki on. I said, oh, really? Do we have to talk to that asshole? She thanks, said, thanks, Pumi. <laughs> I love you, Pumi. I'm so, your fan. I'm your fan, Aki. She said, Thank you, Pumi. Pumi mentioned the helicopter. I mean, Ax, those were the glory days of radio in a way that most people won't understand. Yeah. The radio station was so wealthy and successful that they had a helicopter that went up every single day. I mean, it was the only way to do traffic because we didn't have, you know, Wings. social media or, <laughs> yeah. or algorithms gathering information or ways or any of these things. So tell me about what that was like every morning getting into the helicopter, man. This is some yeah. people's dream. I mean, it's I, just unbelievable. I used to love my chopper. I used to love it. Um, in fact, if you, if I move this away, can you see that uh, picture in the back? Of the, of the election a, photo. That's the that voting is, election. That's the 94 election. Yeah. Uh, that was, uh, we had the Associated Press photographer on our, on, on our helicopter that day, our very first democratic election. That was shot from there where you had that snaking, the snaking lines of people that's, uh, in Soweto that was taken then. But yeah, I mean... The, the, firstly, I'm scared of heights, believe it or not. But I, wow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but I, oh, if you put me on the edge of a building or on the first floor and I look down, I, I can't. I, I start getting shaky and I perspire. But when I'm in a helicopter, wow. I feel completely different. My adrenaline is rushing. And yes, mm. you're quite right. You know, I was responsible for the helicopter. We, we know, I took over from a gent called Paul Beresford. Um, and at one stage, there were four helicopters over the skies of Joburg doing traffic. I mean, Jacaranda had a hel helicopter. Um, Heifelt had a helicopter, Radio Heifelt, as it was known then, now it's 947. And 702 had two helicopters. We had one over Pretoria, one over Joburg. Um, 
and then of course when economics started coming into play and accountants started getting involved all 702's listeners in one helicopter bloody accountants, <laughs> yeah, these accountants. So, so 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 of course with with technology yeah. and social media it it made the the role of the helicopter redundant because you couldn't be on the other side of town to see what was going on and there were digital cameras and etc cetera, etc cetera, but it also got quite expensive i mean our helicopter which we used was a jet ranger and it was one of those you know that it's still around by the way i mean these helicopters you just replace the parts they just i love love helicopters but it got a bit expensive and i remember going to the accountants in um uh, when was it i think it was in the in the in the late 80s early 90s when the rand dollar was getting out of hand and we we had to replace the blades of the helicopter and every you replace them every 5000 hours of flying and at the time it was 35000 dollars per blade and it was like over a million rand so when i went there they looked at this bull wow. and they said get out of here you're grounded and that was the end of the helicopter in those days but we used it for so many things we used it for for casavacking, we used it in emergencies. We used it for news reporting. We used it for you know big events, covering the World Cup, covering the African Nations Cup in '95. I mean, I've got such amazing memories of people that have flown. I mean, we even had Richard Branson. I'll never forget when Virgin Atlantic first started flying in South Africa. We mm -hmm. actually he arrived at at Oatambo on the first Virgin Atlantic flight. And of course, you know what? He loves the attention. He loves being part of, a, of, of, of some great publicity. So we picked him up at the airport with our helicopter and we took him and flying around Joburg and he did a report or two that morning. So we've had some very interesting guests flying with us. Richard Branson was one of them, a hell of a nice guy. Um, but yeah, I, I miss the days of flying and I do get occasionally a chance to fly because I've got some mates who've got helicopters. But um, yeah, helicopters... Yeah. Man, have you guys, have you guys been in a helicopter? Pumi, have you been in a helicopter? I have, but you, you know what I also, while you're uh, reminiscing there, Aki, for some people who, who live in the vicinity of Emirantia have also heard your booming voice at five in the morning. Oh, and gosh. <laughs> well, if you do five in the morning in Emirantia, you creepy bastard. From Mark's heart, getting everybody no, you know what? riled up. Uh, what for walk the talk. Oh right, of course. We're yeah, yeah, yeah. talking about walk the talk, and and you know, as being the station MC for 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 all of 702's events over the last few decades, has been such a privilege as well. You know, I tell you what, I miss most about you know the the, the business is connecting with the listeners because the listeners are the people that you you dedicate. Yeah, I, I, I did I did for the listeners. Because, you did for the listeners. Because, yeah, but Aki, yeah, the nice thing about being alive in 2020 is you can connect with those people without having to be on that station. Those people can connect to you directly. And it's Absolutely. amazing. And this is something I realized seven years ago when I decided it was time to start this business, is that those people who really like what you do and those people who you want to interact with come with yeah. you. And yeah. you, they don't belong to a, a radio frequency anymore. And, and no, nobody right. has to Nobody has to listen to whatever is on because some program directors decided. They choose for themselves, which is the most empowering thing of all. And I'm just, I'm very happy for you, man, because I know that you are a creative and an interesting guy who's got lots more to say and lots more to give. And I think people will, uh, people will go wherever you've got uh, got time and, and, and energy, and you've got plenty of both. So this is going to be exciting. I'm very, I'm very happy for you. I think it's going to be a real uh, opening of a new chapter. No, thank you, Gareth. And I, as I said earlier, you know, you talk about change, and I said change is a positive notion. I think change brings out the best in us, right? And uh, it forces us to think out of the box, think creatively, think of different new things, doing things differently. Akin, did you hear from John Robbie on the day you left? Did. He called you. What did he say? Ah, hello, Wacky. How are you doing? Oh, uh, John, he was. Uh, I, I think. I, I think I was responsible for aging him probably ten years of his life. <laughs> oh, uh, sure. Because I, I tell you what, he's he's already highly strung as an individual, and having me around just made it even worse for him. But I, I love John. He's such a he's such a you know principled guy straight down the line. Just a great broadcaster. You talk about. Being disciplined. There's a guy I've, I've never met a more disciplined guy than John Robbie. And I guess you know most sports people are like that. You know when you dedicate yourself to excelling in the sport, you've got to be disciplined in your life. Um, well, and he did call me. And what's that, Gareth? 
Hang on, I want to hear your story about him in a second, but it's worth reflecting. I don't think he was ever late for his show. He would get there at like 3.30 in the morning or something, right? Yeah, no, 2.30. Yeah, he was so old. So what, tell me what he said when he called you. He goes, Haki, Haki, hi, I just want to say to you, I'm so sorry. Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> Oh, 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 don't worry, don't worry, Aki. You know, it's gonna be okay. And then, and then and you know, he, he's a kind of guy who hates kind of conflict, believe it or not, you know. And I said yeah. to him, I was telling him what happened, and he goes, Ah, just leave it, leave it. I tell you what, leave it. You'll be remembered for walking away with your head held up high. Just leave it, Aki, leave it. Uh that's John Robbie, you know, but he's uh, he's a character, he he's well, he's um great broadcaster as well. I keep, yeah, you, you know, th that that advice from from John about being remembered uh, for walking away with your head held high. I think you have just had an experience that a lot of South Africans are having. A lot of South Africans with with business closures, with contraction yeah. business. A lot of South Africans are having the experience of a having been at a job for a, a long time, or it's a first job for various reasons. Mm, Those mm. closures are seeing many, many people losing what for them is more than just a livelihood. And what would your um, advice be, having had to walk away from a company you have given so much of your life to? Yeah. And that, and that you know, you're not walking away from a career, but you're walking away from a part of your career that has yeah. defined who you are. Yes. What would your advice be for, for people who are feeling hard done by because of the experience of losing that part of their life? Look, it's it's a it's a great question. It's a it's a it's a very tough time, you know, because you question a lot of things, but you don't have time to question a lot of things, and you must just understand one thing: that uh, it's it's not your fault. It's not your fault that you find yourself in that situation. Number one, I mean, various uh, various reasons why things happen. Mine were 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 different, and at the end of the day, I was retrenched. Um, but you've got to be optimistic. You've got to pick up the pieces, and you've got to walk on and don't 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 stay stagnant you know don't be don't be that part of the stream that starts moving to the side of the river and stay stagnant because that water is not going to do you anything so keep moving yeah. with the yeah, flow of the keep, river it's terrible <laughs> keep keep moving with the flow of the river and and really you know just reinvent yourself you know the the one thing that people say to me is that yeah, you know it's you know this and that but you know, if you look around you, there are so many opportunities out there. There are opportunities that are staring at you in the face. You just got to be open to them and accepting them. And I think that once you fall into a state of putting those blinkers on and giving up, you're not going to be open to see those opportunities that are there. So they're yeah. there. Grab them. Uh, know, talk to I mean, I mean, and the so most important thing, Gareth, sorry, is, is yeah. talk to people about how you feel because the emotional – the emotional struggle that people go through by losing a job, et cetera, is very tough as well. Pumas, I'm so glad you asked that question too, because it gave Aki an opportunity to bring up something that I think many people just need to remember. And that is that if you've done something well once, you can always do it well again. And if you've started something from scratch, you've made something out of nothing. And that's what a lot of the, the, the richest people in the world now are people who started something that did not exist before. So yes. when you think when you think you're at the bottom, I mean, look, Jeff Bezos started in a garage. This guy is now worth two hundred billion dollars. He started a company that everyone in the world knows. There was no such thing twelve years ago. Zero. There was bugger all. He made something out of nothing. And all of us, every human being, has the ability and the potential to make something out of nothing. And and if you've been a part of of something that was something like seven hundred two for thirty years, and you've added such value to people's lives. You've made them laugh. You've helped them avoid accidents on the highway. You've taught them about technology. These kinds of things, people don't forget that. They, they, they will remember that for the rest of their lives. But it doesn't mean you have to live in their history books. It means you carry on doing your thing. And, and if you've lost a job over the last couple of months, uh, because it's been tough for everybody, right? If you've lost your job, 
there's plenty in the world for you to do. There's going to be something that you can do that either no one else can do or that you can do better than anyone else. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. And I think that you just need to apply yourself. As I said earlier, um, the, 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 the opportunities exist. You just need to see them. And you never need to give up. And it's a, a network. Talk to people. Don't shut down. Don't give up. Just keep moving forward. That's very nice. Very nice. Well, Alex, always good to see you. And thank you very much for making time for us this morning. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. So good to see you guys. I love what you guys are doing. I love Pumi's smile. Look at how yeah. she's smiling. Trust me, it makes Tuesdays worthwhile. Really? And no, see, a smile, see a smile no, as well. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're, you're the grumpiest guy on the show here, Gareth. By far. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Thank you, Aki. This is becoming a, the therapy session I never knew I needed. Oh, well, but this is, guys, it's been an absolute honor being with you. Thank you for having me on your show and um, really appreciate uh, your well wishes, your, your thoughts, and just, just shooting the breeze with you guys. Thank you, and I wish you well. Well, you can always follow Aki on the various social media handles. He's easy to find, Aki Anastasiu, and uh, he's he's all over the place. So if you if you care about technology, if you're interested in that that part of the world, that's something that he continues to lead the way in. And uh, he's going to probably have a bunch of projects on the go in the next couple of weeks. So keep an eye. You don't want to be left behind. Very nice. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Aki. This was so much fun. So much fun, right? I have to tell you a, a very embarrassing story. You know, Aki and oh, I, whenever we... About Aki. Oh, uh -oh. He, he taught me to go... Oh, you, you know that thing that we did at the start, right? So <laughs> Aki used to walk up to me, at whether I was... Whether I'd seen him or not, and then he'd do this, how oh, are you? And it can sometimes be frightening. Anyway. <laughs> I did it to see her the other day. I thought it was you calling. And I was... <laughs> this is what happened to me. So I was sitting in a meeting once, and this unknown number came up on my phone and I was in a bit of a silly mood and I, I answered like you. I went, who are you? And then it turned out to be the minister in the presidency. Oh my <laughs> God. He me, no, he, he was asking me to MC a thing. Jeff Which Hadeber. Minister? Jeff Hadeber. Jeff, he was, Jeff Hadeber. Uh, get, uh, I uh, Jeff. Jeff I went, oh, you. I felt such a <laughs> stupid I mean, he, he, he went, hi, can I speak to Gareth, please? <laughs> <laughs> so, that, is, all your fault. that is so embarrassing. That is so embarrassing. It's very much your fault. All right, everybody, have a happy day. Thanks, Ax. Um, we will see you tomorrow morning, 6 a.m., bright and early. There's oh, lots wow. of good on uh, cliffcentral.com. We've got season three repeating of uh, Blind History, but we recorded our first episode of the brand new season just the other day, and that's coming very, very shortly. Lots of good stuff. Stick around. Podcasts galore. And uh, don't miss out on any of Aki's activities, too, by following him wherever he is on social media, which is all over the place. Thanks, Pums. Thanks, Sia. Thanks, Ax. We will see you tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Very nice. That was lovely. Thank you. Really well good. done, Sia. Well done, Sia. Thank you. It was so much fun. Yeah. Well done, well done for getting Aki, Sia. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're an absolute pleasure to deal between, with. I appreciate it. Between 4.30 a.m. and what, like 9 o'clock, all he does is eat his porridge and do a couple yeah. of <laughs> Take old people medicine. <laughs> I'm going to go and do that now. Don't joke. Uh. <laughs> all right. Okay, we'll, we'll okay, guys. Cheers. Make bye bye. For Aki? Yes. We must make a plan for a lunch. We can invite Damon, but I don't think we must invite Stevie Bacher. I think he's too drug addled. No, no, no. He's fucked. He's fucked. Fucked, eh? Yeah. yeah I don't know. I haven't really spoken to him for a while, but no, we can't invite him. No, apparently it's bad. So let's let's just invite him. You even want Damon. I mean, we can even leave him out. <laughs> no, we can have Damon. Just invite him for dessert. I see him, <laughs> oh. I see him, I see him at Norwood Mall. He like, walks around and lurks there. He's... Oh God, he's so loud. I had coffee with him a few months back, you know. And, you know <laughs> he's so loud. You know that you Lurks, stick with him in the, the coffee word, shop, man. And you yeah. know he talks so loudly in the coffee shop. And you know, what do you think, Aki? What's going on? He said, Damon, just turn it down. Everybody can oh. hear us. We're in a coffee shop. It's embarrassing. He's so, he's so loud. Yeah. No, he anyway. has no. It's because he's got a. His brain doesn't connect. properly. he's got a fucking. <laughs> he's like. Um, you've seen Curb Your Enthusiasm, right? 
Yes, yes, he's that guy. Yeah. So he's like Larry David, but a real life one. And then he's got um, he's got elements of George Costanza, which was a character based on Larry David. Yes, yes. Yeah. And and you remember that guy Paul from? There was a show called Spin City with Michael J. Fox. Yes, yes, yes. It was like in this, the mayor's office or something. Correct. And go and watch. You go and look up. Just go onto YouTube now and look up Paul from Spin City. He looks like Damon. He sounds like Damon. He's the. He's actually. A, they based the character on him. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm gonna do that. Paul from right. Spin City. Okay. Yeah, go and look him up. I promise you, you'll laugh your fucking ass off. All right, Axe. We'll see you later. Cheers, guys. Be well. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go chat later. Cool. See ya.